In this video, we're gonna fix a 65 inch Panasonic Plasma TV. And we're gonna do it cheaply. Uh, one of the reasons why I have this YouTube channel is to help people fix things on their own and save money in the process. And as I like to say, learn some things. My friend found this by the side of the road and was very kind and dropped it off. The model number for this TV is, where is it at? There it is. The TCP65S1. And the problem with this TV is that when you plugged it in, down here by the power button, there's a little light that comes on. When you plugged in, that light would blink eight times. And that's a code that tells us something's wrong. And the details of that, you have to look it up of what's wrong inside the TV. Now when we open up the back of this, I suspect that we're gonna find that one of the boards, the SS board, according to the documentation online, is a problem. So let's go ahead and fix it. I'm gonna show you how to replace these capacitors on the 65 inch plasma TV which is, uh, you can see how they're cracked right there. This is the uh, SS board. There's the model number. And uh, I didn't video taking the back off of this TV, but here's what it looks like. You can probably figure out how to get all the screws off. This board goes right here. And to take these tabs off here, Make sure you don't tear them, otherwise your TV will be no good because those are not really replaceable. Um, but here you pull the pull that little gray thing outward, and then you uh, kind of lift up this way. See those little holes? Lift up. There's a plastic tab that hooks onto there. So you pick it up, kind of push it out towards you, and pull it this way. Um, you should be able to figure that out. Just don't tear it. So <clears throat> this TV had an eight blink problem. That means that when you turned it on, the red light in the front blinked eight times. And it's because these capacitors are bad. I bought new ones from China. And I will uh, show you where I got those from, or you can ask in the description if I forget. And uh, I'll show you how to do, how to do it. If you notice, these capacitors have this uh, silicone, or I don't know what this gray stuff is, to kind of hold them in place. Before I solder these out, uh, I'm going to loosen this up. You can see I already broke this one away. This one, there's a little force here. Maybe when I solder them out, they'll come out a little easier. Uh, I'll just do it one at a time. Uh, oh. You'll get to follow along. We'll get them out of there. So I'm going to flip it over. Put it on my little board holder here. This thing's pretty handy. You can buy this on Amazon. Uh, I moved the board around a little bit because there was so much glare on the uh, on the camera um, on the video. So what I'm going to do just to get this off, I'm going to use some pliers and hold down the capacitor here. You can't see it because I grabbed it underneath. And I'm using a hot air rework, rework station. You can use a soldering iron too, but I'm hoping this will just be a little bit faster. So I'm hoping it will just melt the, melt the solder here. I have it at 380 degrees Celsius, so it should... Uh, should work. I'm going to put some pressure here on these to pull them out. I might need to turn the heat up. Alright, so I had trouble melting the solder on this old board. And so what it did to help things move along is I added some flux and some leaded solder, some fresh uh, leaded solder to these 
um, pins that were remaining. You can see here it just melts right away. And so I just grab it underneath. And it looks like I'm grabbing the right one and see it comes right out. So much faster. All right, so if you're having trouble, like I was, do this. I don't know, you cannot see that. I'm so sorry, I'm filming on my phone. Um, I'm just adding solder, leaded solder, some fresh solder. You probably, lead, lead freeze probably would work too. Um, but I'm getting this off by mixing in the solder. And this one is, there we go. Did come through the other side? Nope, one more. There we go. Okay. Now, I believe that I got them all out of here. Uh, let's see, this side. Yep, all oh, looks good. Okay, now, new ones. All right, ready to add the new capacitors back in. And uh, as far as I know, actually, I have no idea if these are directional or not. Um, I'm going to turn the board, turn our board around and um, I remember the printing was on this, oops, sorry, I remember the printing was this direction, so that's how I'm going to put them in. Um, now you can see those, this doesn't quite match where the original holes are, so I'm going to have to get a little, a little tricky here. All right, since I'm doing this live and I'm learning a few tricks or two, so what I need to do is I'm having trouble getting these in there, so just grab it like this and bend these in, bend these arms in just a little bit. Like this, so that it matches up with the hole. See, I got two in there so far, but I'm having trouble. So if you just line it up like this, it should just, see that? Go right into the hole without having trouble. So here's my tip of the day to do that with these that are too big for the space. All right, I'm gonna film this last one so you can see what I'm doing. Take the piece, bend them in. So that's about the right size that you want. Line them up. Put pressure behind it. I already have solder on here. The fresh solder. So see that one goes in. And then this one's in. I just gotta push it in. It won't work its way in here because you gotta do both at a time or they won't fit. Push this one in there and there you go. Bend these down, and that's what it looks like. How about that? Now, I, I'm going to touch up, make sure these have enough space in between them. Uh, doesn't look pretty, but all it has to do is be electrically connected. And uh, so I'm going to just touch these up, make sure it's the pads are all looking good, and then I'm just gonna clip these ends off and try try the TV. Let's put the board back in the TV. There's this connection that goes down here underneath this board. I'll take this off, the screw off right here, pull this out. Oh, um, before I do that, there's this wire that needs to go on here, and then it goes behind this down to a board down at the bottom. You should be able to figure out where that goes. And make sure this gets plugged in properly. Okay, all right. All right, sorry about blocking the view there. Um, this guy needs to go down. 
Okay. Yeah. So I'm just doing the one at the bottom here. So you can't see it, but it should be pretty self-explanatory. There's only three connections on this TV. Make sure it clips in there good. And uh, let's see, I gotta do this one. All right, so to do these, I'll do this one so you can see. You uh, pull these gray things out and get work these in carefully. Okay, into the slots. Uh, all right, throw, let me throw a screw in there just to make sure this guy doesn't slide anywhere. Put in two screws. There we go. Back to this one. These are tricky buggers to get in. I think you might just have to use trial and error to uh, figure it out. There we go. And when you, when you get it in there, kind of push down on it here, make sure it's even, and pull back on these. And you, you have a good, good connection. I think if you just play with these very carefully, you'll figure out what in the world I'm talking about of how, this, how these go in here. I don't know why Panasonic designed this kind of connector or wanted to use this kind of connector. I have no idea why, if it was like for high voltages or or what. Why why would they pick this kind of connector? I right, just got one more here. Again, sorry for blocking your view. You cannot see what I'm doing probably, but I'm doing the same thing I did above. Okay. Three of those guys are in there. I gotta get this top one. That looks good. Um, okay, now I have to hook up the power. Now this TV hasn't been on for a long time, so that's not an issue. But if your TV, if your if your capacitors are charged up on that main power supply, you wanna you really wanna make sure that that's all dissipated before you plug that puppy back in there because you might get a big shock. Anyway, and you really want to stay away from all of those super high capacitors or super high voltage capacitors because you could actually kill yourself working on a TV like this. So proceed at your own caution. Um, I guess um, that hopefully should be pretty evident, self-evident. Okay, here comes the moment of truth. We're ready to test this bad boy out. Got the new capacitors. See them way down there, those red guys. Plug the TV in. Um, because of the way I have, it's the TV is so darn big. I'm using this board to get to the power button. Since I don't have a remote, at least I don't have the remote handy. Look at that, it works. Well, if you have an eight break blink problem, hopefully you can solder in five new capacitors and get your 65 inch plasma TV working uh, like this one.